Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week, because we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we got some cool stuff going on with some orange and black G10 to start things off, because we have got a couple of new exclusives to unveil. First off is a new version of the CJRB Crag. We've previously had this available, uh, and still do in fact, as an exclusive with a brown burlap micarta handle, also a contoured handle, whereas most of the crags are flat. We thought it was time to update it and uh, add a new version to the exclusive mix. We have this really cool orange and black G10 material right here. Same price though as the, uh, the burlap version, 45 bucks for this piece of gear right here. Cleaver shaped blade, about 3.4 inches D2 steel with the black coating. Decently thin on the blade stock there too. So you, even though you've got this big, powerful blade shape, it's still gonna be a pretty good slicer and a very usable tip on that cleaver as well. The contoured handles feel great. They really fill the hand quite nicely. So if you're pushing this knife into heavier jobs, this has got the handle to back things up. Nice orange pivot collar is like the perfect pop to accentuate that black hardware black liners, the only silver parts of the stop pin and the barrel spacers there at the back. Liner lock to keep things secure when open, ball bearings in the pivot, just a fantastic flipper. And truly at 45 bucks, this is a performance bargain as well. Next up, we've got a new version of the Night Fighter from Double Star Blades, 170 bucks for this one right here. Really wicked recurve harpoon point blade, 50 to 100 steel, very tough stuff. And then you've got the parkerized finish, kind of a black stonewash actually going on. And some more cool, not quite standard orange and black G10. The material starts off as just your normal layered black and orange G10, but the milling pattern going on here is really sweet. It gives it a very distinctive look and a lot of grip too. I mean, this is as opposed to like a, you know, perfectly contoured ergonomic handle. This one is still not uncomfortable, I'd say, but it's ultimately designed to try and never slip out of your grip, whether you're barehanded or wearing gloves, there's enough there to bite in and give you that extra traction. Very cool tactical design, but very utilitarian as well. Just under five inches on the blade length, you got a little extra cutting power from that recurve. Very nice. The sheath for this unit is Bolteron clicks in much like Kydex, almost the same stuff to the end user. There's virtually no real difference. And it comes with a dots style attachment, which is modular with the, uh, the whole pattern there. Sorry, let me unlock it. There we go. Locks in place as you can see, and you can carry it in a lot of different configurations to suit your preferences. All right, next up, and this is kind of crazy big news actually, new versions of the Swiss tools from Victorinox. And they got these little wings on the side. And no, it's not for, you know, hydrodynamics or anything like that. They've added one hand opening to some of these models. This is the MXBS comes in about 189. And for that, you've got a bevy of tools. I think it's pretty much the same uh, assortment of tools as the standard model, but you've also got on each side, a one hand opening locking blade. Standard pen style blade or, or not a pen style blade, but standard Swiss Army style of blade shape on the one with the bent tab for the opening. And if you're worried about sharpening there, it is behind the path of the edge a little bit, but it's not so far out that you're not gonna be able to angle the blade on your stone and still get in there and sharpen easily enough. Closes one-handed. The other one, because it's on the same side, it's a little harder to do if you're right-handed. Can be done, but it's quite awkward as you can see. In fact, I'm, let's see, don't try this at home, pushing out on the tip there. Would not recommend. That's more of the, uh, the lefty friendly blade. You get your recurved serrated blade on that side, which still locks and is easy enough to close when you go to disengage. This is of course the larger size of the Swiss tool. You've got the bigger frame, very comfortable, very strong jaws, and of course, all the tools that you could be looking for. They've also updated the Spirit models with the same thing. Uh, this particular one here, you can only get that in black, but in the Spirit, you can get it 
in silver or black. This is the Spirit MX. Single one, one hand opening blade in this case. A little bit smaller, but the same kind of standard Swiss Army shape on that one. Folds up easy. This one's a little bit slipperier just by the nature of its high polished finish, which of course makes Thomas very happy when he has to shoot close ups of these things. Fine. How are the reflections right now? Can we read your shirt? As expected. As expected. Um, nice little units. These guys fold up are even more comfortable, I think, this smaller size than the full sized version. And both of these come with an belt sheath, which I have over here. Now, right out of the box, it'll look something like this. We've got Velcro with the pouch on the front. And on the back, there's kind of a lot going on here. It's set up right out of the box with this strap here, so you could carry it or vertically on the belt. You can also undo this strap, move it up like so, and you could hang it from something if you wish. But you've also got two more straps here that you can see if you want to utilize those, basically you're going to tuck that big flap behind it because there is an, an open pocket in between there. And then you can actually carry one of these horizontally on your belt, which I am a big proponent and fan of because it's very comfortable. And even with the full size tool, it's still fairly low profile coming off of your belt. It's not nothing, but it's not that bad. So very easy to keep out of the way. Definitely my preferred would be my preferred method of carry if I were going to pick one of these up myself. So very cool. And I'm glad they give you those extra options. The hanging bit kind of unexpected. I wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have ever imagined putting something like that on a sheath like that, but I can definitely see the utility. So pretty cool. All right, next up, and we are very excited to be helping introduce Jack Wolf knives. And if you're watching this on the day this video comes out, which is a Thursday, these aren't available yet, they're going to be available tomorrow on the Friday after this video posts very limited quantities on these particular knives. So make sure to keep an eye out on our social media pages and act fast when the post goes up. I love the packaging on these. Let's let's show this other one here. This knife is called the sharpshooter. And before I get to the knife, it comes rolled up in a microfiber towel, you've got a sheath uh, leather pocket slip, I should say, a sticker and even a pog. Welcome to the knives. But I, I love the packaging here. It's so cool. It kind of, they're not the only slip joint maker because these are slip joints that do tubes for their packaging, but it's one of the cooler ones I've seen because of the screw lid. I actually use this tin for a fair number of different things, which is pretty neat. But let's talk about the knives, the sharpshooter. So named because this has kind of that gun stock style handle frame of the classic slip joint era brought up to date or reimagined, barely even reimagined, just updated for modern day. Now, these originally were going to be made by Riot. Production switched around and these are not made by Riot for what's being released now. But if you hadn't told me that, I wouldn't have known because these feel just as good as anything Riot has done as OEM work for anyone else. These are excellent. M390 steel, just under three inches long. You've got that very aggressive clip point shape and a very satisfyingly deep hollow grind. I mean, it's a full height, hollow, very thin behind the edge, very excellent day-to-day -day cutter. Titanium frame, we've got blue fat carbon for the inlays on this particular one. Excellent fit and finish, or walk and talk, I should say. I mean, just feel that snap. So good with that half stop and the action. Love it, 300 bucks for this particular model. We've also got natural black and green canvas micarta for about 275. So a little bit less and a little more rugged feeling generally. The black is really nice, especially. Fit and finish is great. Like I mentioned when I was talking about the walk and talk earlier, check out the seamlessness of that open position, the spine, the back spring, and the tang of the knife. Perfect. Whew. So good. Nice snap and the back spring sits flush when it's in that open position. Sometimes those things can be a little bit off. Not so here. Snap. So, so satisfying and so, so limited. These are going to be pretty hard to get a hold of, I think for a little while because the uh, production quantities haven't ramped up a whole lot yet. But what we're going to be seeing is 
basically different patterns periodically coming out in drops. And if they're all built like this, I'm very much looking forward to what they will be coming out with. But that's not the only slip joint we have this week. There's actually a bunch of slip joint non-locking stuff peppered through here, as you'll soon see. We have a new version of the Lion Steel Thrill with a Dama Steel Blade. Very nice. Coming in at 295. Uh, sorry, this is not a Dama Steel Blade. This is a Chad Nichols Damascus. My apologies. Uh, so base, some of the base metals there are going to be like AEBL and some other stuff like that, I believe. 3.15 inches, so just over that three inch length. One of my favorite drop points on a slip joint these days. Full flat grind, great shape. A little bit of a swedge there at the tip for ease of use around that tip and a crown spine too. But of course, the party piece, well, it's a knife with two party pieces, shall we say. The defining characteristic of the thrill, of course, is the integral construction. Unlike a traditional, uh, traditional slip joint, where you would have a separate leaf spring acting for the back spring, the back spring on this is the same piece of titanium that the handles are made out of. Very neat, and you've got the steel uh, insert on the end that actually meshes up with the tang of the knife. These things have always had good action, but it is surprising after ha just handling those jack wolves, which are truly, truly stellar, this feels a little bit less, which is not to say anything bad about it because it still is very good. It's just AB, one next to the other. Very nice, very classy knife, and if you don't like a slip joint kind of rattling around in your pocket, this knife does have their H whale pocket clip. You can see right there, it's flush. Push this button, which is spring, spring actuated or spring, has a spring. Springy. It's springy. The pocket clip sticks out. You can slip it into your pocket, let go. And then when you pull it out of your pocket, it'll snap right back into place. So nothing to interrupt the kind of feel in the hand as you're using the knife, which is a very cool touch. All right, next up is not a slip joint. It is a locking knife, but I put it next to the thrill because their handle finishes happen to be so similar. Uh, we showed you a slip joint last week from Tactile Knife Company, which is the same company as the Tactile Turn Pens, which is funny. There's certain times where I pronounce the same word different, differently depending on the context. I've always called the pens Tactile Turn, but somehow Tactile Knife, keep saying Tactile Knife company. And I'm not sure why. Discuss in the comments. The ice cream. Butter blank. Two syllables. How do you pronounce that word right there? Because I pronounce it differently also depending on context. You eat pecan pie, but I eat butter pecan ice cream. I don't know why. Anyway. I prefer cookie dough. I'll get down on some cookie dough with you. Ice cream date later? No guarantees. <laughs> well, we did show you a slip joint from Tactile, Tactile Knife Company last week called the Bear. Sorry, Texans, for mispronouncing it. it on the page, it says Bexar. I didn't realize it was pronounced that way, so my apologies. Uh, this knife is called the Rock Wall, and I don't think I could possibly mispronounce that. At least I hope not. We'll see. <laughs> 299 bucks for this knife, titanium handles. Magna Cut Blade Steel, the hot steel still. Introduced about a year ago, or unveiled roundabouts a year ago. Uh, basically the first powder metallurgy steel or any steel that has a huge performance, uh, a huge performance level on all three levels of the knife spectrum. Edge retention, toughness, and stainlessness in a way no other knife steel does. Very cool stuff. Three inch blade here, very usable drop point, thin enough, High flat grind, very useful day to day. Liner lock, folds up nicely. Really finely finished details here. The pocket clip is executed very well. I really enjoy the thumb studs here. From the front, they just look flat, but if you look at it from the side, there's a cool spiral milling pattern going on. And then when you go to, when you want to use the knife, very nice. Great everyday knife, great gentleman's knife as well, for sure. So speaking of some of the fancier looking knives, we've got some more slip joints for you. And we're gonna go classic American slip joints here with case. First, actually we've got about like 30 new case items, I think that just uh, showed up on our new items newsletter earlier this week. 
bunch of this orange jig bone. Uh, they call this cayenne bone. This is a seahorse whittler that you see it on right here. 79 bucks, stainless steel blades, and a great sitting, sitting on the porch or by the campfire whittling knife. You got your coping blade, your pen blade, and of course, the large Warncliffe blade for heavier cuts. Great for EDC as well, not just a whittler. Jig bone, of course, not only looks great, gives you texture as well. So they're very easy to hold on to when you're doing any of those intricate grips when you're whittling away. Very much like that. Next up, we have got a bunch of maple burlwood knives, also in stock on the Texas toothpick here on amongst some other models 66 for this one, uh, I believe stainless steel. Yep, stainless steel blade, very elegant, very precise looking knife very cool looking handle material. Even though you only get to see a little bit of it on this small knife, you still see a lot of figuring and it turns out turned out very, very nice. Maybe I should stop putting my hands over so you can see how good it looks. That's what B rolls for. That's what B rolls for. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, next up, let's go more utilitarian. We have a Tony Bowes tribal lock with orange G 10. And there are fancier versions of this out there with fancier covers on it. But I've I don't know if I've ever held at least one of the more kind of workaday versions with the G 10 here 60 bucks for this knife blades a little bit over that three inch mark, I believe stainless steel, durable handle materials lock back on this one, in a way, and hear me out folks, you always think of like the sod buster as the stereotypical just like working person's knife, because it's basic and it just works. If you want a sod buster with a knife and you're not married to the sod buster having that exact blade shape. This is just that working person's knife right here, especially with something like orange G 10. Very useful blade, safe lock, come roomy enough handle for most folks to feel like they have a full grip on it. Yeah, I used to have a tribal lock. I don't know what I did with it. I must have traded it off somewhere. Or you might have packed it up. I don't think no, I do know everything I packed up recently. So you folks know I'm uh, in the process of moving here. So again, Seth V might be filling in for me a little bit here on the channel. But don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. But no, I definitely didn't pack it up because I had to pack every single knife up individually in paper and padding so that oh yeah, it took way too long. I should have been spending my time doing more productive things, but such is such is life. One more handle material to show you this is Mediterranean jigged blue bone, several ver or several different knife patterns with it new in stock right now. This of course is the mid folding hunter and this has a kickstart assisted opening mechanism and a pocket clip and thumb studs and a liner lock things you don't typically think of. At least I don't typically think of when I think of case knives, but you get all those kind of modern conveniences on a classic looking knife liner holds it open quite aggressively. And then when you're ready to open it works pretty well there too. And very cool. There's a uh, sod buster junior I think available in this pattern right here. I don't know Would I rather have that or would I rather have this uh, this Tony Bowes here. I'm genuinely not sure I really like the the, the sod buster junior from case it's a good good shape good pattern good size. Thomas has no opinion for once in his life. It's fine. Yeah, so <laughs> One more non locker. I think it's the last non locker. Uh, this week, not a slip joint. This is a detent joint style of non locking knife. So no back spring, you've got dual detent bars on this one. This is the Kershaw esteem comes in at $42. And I'm really digging this. I love the blade shape. It's hard to make a drop point a little more interesting. I mean, so many drop points while they're very useful are just eh, it's a drop point. Okay, fine, cool. Moving on. I like this. There's some character going on. It looks really good. Still going to be very useful. Thin enough, full flat grind, and slice quite well. 8CR series stainless on it, two and a half inches in length, so a good size there. Split handle construction. You've got stainless steel and G10. Great, creates a very nice look and a deep carry pocket clip that could maybe give you a little bit more room. This is might be a little tight on some thicker pants out there. But one of the cool things about a detent joint is you can flick it closed. There's no one hand opening on this, although you could probably pinch it. Yeah, we could pinch that open. The action on this one is excellent. I mean, some you can pretty much do this with all D 
detent joint style knives, but the action on this one is kind of like the Jack Wolf we looked at earlier. When something's just extra good, extra snappy. Very, very nicely executed indeed. One more Kershaw this week. We have the Inception, which I know folks have really been looking forward to. 65 bucks for this knife. For that, you've got G10, you've got D2 steel, three and a quarter inches in length. Technically, technically a clip point, I would say, a straight clip point there, but it's gonna behave mostly like a drop point, I would say. I, I wouldn't get mad at you if you called it a drop point, even if it would be like technically incorrect. I don't think it matters in this case. It's a modified reverse tonto. This is why I'm moving. I gotta get away from Thomas and his reverse Tonto nonsense for a little bit. Actually, I'm very happy. No reverse Tontos on the table today. Oh, I see one right there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You try my patience, sir. <laughs> no, he's fine. You've also got a deep carry pocket clip on this knife, which is reversible, left or right. And you've got ball bearings in the pivot. This is not a speed safe assisted opener, which I know a lot of enthusiasts, it's not their thing. They want the ball bearings. This one has it. Actually, looks really nice on the closed position. Sometimes when you have a bit of the tang from the back of the blade sticking out, it can look a little, little off to some people, but they've actually given a little bit of a shape that makes it interesting there. Instead of just lopping it off the angle there, it seems considered anyway, we'll say that. But as far as the action, yeah, nothing to worry about. Flips great that whatever blade shape you want to call it is going to work nicely. D2 will hold an edge. You've got a high flat grind. You've got double swedges essentially there at the back. It's going to be a very nice cutter. And last but not least, we've got a new Urban Trapper from Boker. And this is the Urban Trapper 42, which means it's designed by the German company Boker to fit the German knife code in that you can have a locking knife, but it can't be one handed opening. So you don't get the flipper tab that you normally expect on an Urban Trapper. Price on this $112. You've got VG10 steel and titanium handles with a stonewashed finish. And some one or some two hand openers can be made to open one handed, but they try to make it as difficult as possible with the 42 on purpose, the 42 series in general, I should say. You got a little bit of a nail nick there, easy to grab that and open very elegantly. I've always loved the Urban Trapper shape. It's honestly one of my favorites out there. Nice details, horizontal grain, crown spine, excellent deep carry pocket clip, which is recessed with flush head screws. So very kind on your pockets. And for a little bit less money, you can even get the petite version of this 42 model of the Urban Trapper. So it'd be under three inches on the blade length. Uh, this one right here is 3.4. Great gentleman's knife, great letter opener, steak knife, or just classy daily carry. All right, that's all I have to show you this week. Let me know in the comments what your favorites were that you saw today. And if you wanna get your hands on any of them, links in the description. Those will take you over to the Knife Center. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program too, because if you're gonna spend your money on one of these knives, wouldn't you wanna earn some free money to spend on your next one? I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.